I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Petek here. So today's video will be, will most likely be the final episode of SFF Spotlight uh, this year. So today's video will be SFF Spotlight episode 47, but depending on how many news that I got within, well, the rest of this year, the rest of this month, there might be a possibility of another episode before the end of the year because believe me, I did not expect this episode to have so many topics to cover because we are really at the end of the year, but apparently there is still a lot of news, so many news uh, to spotlight. And today I have almost 30 topics to spotlight. So yeah, I will try to be efficient and effective with each topic. But just like usual, if you are new here, if this is the first time you watch my videos or this uh, series of videos, well, this is where I will talk about new book news, new cover reveals, new special edition, new Kickstarter, and also new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. I don't have any new not released to spotlight today and unlike my usual episodes this time i will start by talking about kickstarter and special editions first because i only have about three yeah i only have about three in total kickstarter and special editions to spotlight today so let's start from the only kickstarter campaign that i will spotlight today first and also i think many of you know that i have been a supporter of Raidmark creative kickstarter campaigns for more than a year now. I love what they're doing. And in today's episode, Redmark will be sponsoring today's video, which I think is pretty awesome. They have been very happy. They have actually asked to do this for quite a while now, but I kept on declining. But this time, well, I have relented and I have accepted to be, well, collaborating with them. Might as well anyway, because I love what they're doing with Kickstarter campaigns, with creating special editions, and they are really genuine in wanting to support my YouTube channel as well. So the first topic to spotlight will be, again, for the Kickstarter campaign for the Warform Stormweaver series by Bryce O'Connor. And this is for the Iron Prince and also Fire and Song paperback and hardcover edition. Both Iron Prince and Fire and Song are some of the best selling progression fantasy or progression sci-fi books on Amazon. I heard nothing but great things about them and I look forward to reading them as soon as I can. But right now, the Kickstarter campaign for this uh, project has exceeded $170,000 in funding. And at this moment, there's only one more stretch goal to meet. And yeah, this is a beautiful hardcover edition with a cover art by Man Sik Yang, designed by Sean King, and paper art by X Charney. And also there is a limited age edition. And yeah, just like always, as expected of Red Marks edition, this come with an acid-free paper, Smithsoon binding, and also beautiful interior design. And in less than two weeks, this Kickstarter campaign will be over. So if you are interested in getting yourself a hardcover copy of Iron Prince and also Fire and Song, make sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign and also back it if you are interested. Thank you so much once again to Raidmark for sponsoring today's video. And for the next special edition to Spotlight, this will be again for a publisher or a company that I have always supported since their genesis. And of course, this is The Broken Binding. The Broken Binding has revealed, has officially revealed their new Broken Binding press title. And it will be for the first book in the Mortal Technique series by Rob J. Hayes, Never Die. I think many of you know that I am a huge fan of Never Die. Well, for the entire Mortal Technique series, Spirits of Vengeance is my favorite book in the entire series so far. It is also my favorite book by Rob J. Hayes. So I hope Broken Binding Press will eventually get around to doing their own edition of that title as well, including Pawn's Gambit. But for now, this is their edition of Never Die. This will come with a new artwork by Felix Ortiz, new interior artworks by Felix Ortiz as well. And also there is a new map, beautiful fully colored map, by Sherry Sloak and and paper art by Andrew Maleski. The general sale for this one will take place on the 7th of January. If you haven't read this book yet though, I do highly recommend it. It is such a great wuja and anime inspired fantasy novel and I loved it. I think it's really good and I cannot wait to get my hands on this beautiful special edition. And moving on to the last special edition to spot that today, this will be again published by The Broken Binding and this will be for a modern classic. So this one will be for the Perdido Street Station by China Miaville. 
the first book in the new Krobuzon uh, trilogy. I haven't read this series yet, even though I have always wanted to do it. I heard this one is bizarre and also very memorable and distinct, for, uh, especially compared to a lot of other fantasy and sci-fi books. And Broken Binding will be releasing their own special edition of Perdido Street Station. I have no idea whether they will be doing the second book and third book as well, but for now, yeah, they will be doing their own edition of Perdido Street Station. So after years of having these books on my TBR pile, so I think, well, I will be reading new Kerbu Zone series using the Broken Binding edition. It's nearly the end of the year and I'm really proud to see and witness how far Broken Binding has come since their first appearance. I still remember the day when I first helped launch the Broken Binding on my YouTube channel. They were still pretty small back then. And speaking of, well, helping launching a bookstore. Before I talk about all the exciting book news and also TV show adaptation, I want to give a spotlight to this new European fantasy and sci-fi bookstores first, Wondor Books. Wondor is a brand new European fantasy and sci-fi bookstore founded because finding English sci-fi and fantasy books in the non-English speaking parts of Europe can be a challenge. Their goal is to provide the most extensive selection of fantasy and sci-fi books in stock and ready to ship, and if not, able to get it on short notice. Beyond providing an extensive selection of books, Wondor also strives to foster a vibrant community of diverse SFF readers, and they very much encourage shooting them an email or a DM to share your thoughts, recommendations, and books you would like to see on their shelves. They also are determined to make sure the books you purchase from them will always arrive in great condition. So if you're in Europe and looking for some new books, take a look at Wonder Books website on wonderbooks.com or check the link in the description down below and you can get a discount right now by using the code APATRICK15 on checkout when you buy something from them. So yeah, if you are in Europe, I highly recommend you to check out their bookstore. It always fills me with glee that someone is opening a new bookstore. So yeah, hopefully they can find their audience. So yeah, I think that's it for the topic of Kickstarter Special Edition and Bookstore. Now let's talk about all the book news. Well, I guess for the first one, it is still kind of related to Special Edition, but this one is Stormlight Archive news. Because I was just talking about Special Edition, so let's start with the bad news first. So in a recent update from Brandon Sanderson, he has mentioned that due to inflation, well, the price of their Leatherbound Edition, their Dragonsteel Leatherbound Edition, will increase by $25 per volume. So yeah, that is, that is a steep increase in price in my opinion, especially if you are going to purchase their edition of The Way of Kings and also Words of Radiance. The upcoming Words of Radiance, which now has practically been confirmed to be priced at $250 excluding shipping. And this price will be applied to the Way of Kings Leatherbound edition as well. So yeah, it is very expensive. I own almost all of their Dragon Steel Leatherbound edition. I am right now missing Elantris, but I am certainly looking forward to getting myself Words of Radiance Leatherbound edition next year. But now I'm still not sure because that is a that is a huge increase in prices. 250 plus $60 shipping fee, it means that I will have to pay $310 to get uh, Words of Radiance Letter Bound Edition. The only reason I was able to acquire the Way of Kings Letter Bound was because Jen Ducky, a friend and also a kind patron of mine, offered to give me the edition. And I will always continue to treasure that. But for now, although I really want to get myself Words of Radiance, I still have to check my budget. Hopefully I can afford it uh, next year. But that's the bad news. But for the good news, well, Sanderson has confirmed that Stormlight Archive Book 5, Knights of Wind and Truth, is now about 96% done. That's only 4% left, and I think knowing Sanderson, he will be able to get this done before the end of the year. So yeah, that's something so exciting. And also, after that, we have editing, copy editing, and I think Brandon Sanderson is on track to be releasing uh, Knights of Wind and Truth in December 2024. I'm always constantly amazed at his productivity, and tomorrow is Brandon Sanderson's birthday. I'm sure that he'll be talking about, he will be giving updates regarding all of his uh, projects. That's what he always do annually and I look forward to seeing that update and I guess we will see whether there will be a new SFF Spotlight episode coming sooner because of that uh, or not. But yeah, again, as I said, I'm always amazed by his productivity and I cannot say the same for the next author because he is still, I think, productive, just not in writing. And of course, I'm talking about George R.R. Martin. Honestly, I did not want to include this one because I do not think this actually uh, kind of deserves a spotlight. So 
George Martin has mentioned in his blog post that he's meeting with his UK publisher Harper Voyager or Harper Collins to talk about Winds of Winter. That's it, it's only one sentence and we don't know anything else. But apparently, many fans of the series are jumping into conclusion that well, George Martin is talking about the release date of Winds of Winter with his UK publisher. I really do not think that is the case. I think uh, it is safe to assume that George Martin is talking about his struggle in writing Winds of Winter and just talking about his progress. That's it. That's really what I think about it. I think we shouldn't jump to conclusion when it comes to the matter of Doors of Stone or Winds of Winter. Doing this is why we and the fans of this series are constantly disappointed by well, whatever news appearing out of George Martin or Patrick Rothfuss that are not the real estate. And well, to be fair and to be honest, I think most news coming regarding Winds of Winter or Doors of Stone will not be real estate anytime soon. So yeah, let's just be patient and wait for official confirmation from George Martin or the publishers. As sad as it is because we have been waiting for more than 10 years, but this is the only way. This is the way. And well, moving on to the next topic, this will be for something I'm excited about too. So Ryan Cahill has confirmed that the title of the fifth and the final book in the Bound and the Broken series will be of Gods and Ashes and the color scheme this time will be green. Yes, this one will conclude the Bound and the Broken series, but this will not be the final book taking place in the same world. Ryan Cahill has mentioned many times now that there will be more books and also more series taking place in the same world. I think Ryan has mentioned that the next series after this will be a prequel or like thousands of years before the events of The Bound and the Broken. So yeah, I look forward to reading that as well. But for now, let's wait for Of Empires and Dusper's. Uh, the fourth book and the penultimate installment in the Bound and the Broken series. And the next news, just like uh, of Gods and Ashes, will be again for a concluding volume. This will be for the concluding volume in the Guile Song series by Shona Lolos. The title of this book is The Land of the Living and the Dead, and the cover art is once again beautifully designed and done by Mikaela Alkaino. Ryan Cahill was actually the one who revealed this piece of news first. And yeah, I look forward to uh, reading this historical Irish fantasy series uh, next year for the first time. And I plan to read the entire trilogy within next year as well. I heard so many great things about this trilogy. I think I must not ignore it. And just like uh, The Bun and the Broken, Shauna Lawless has confirmed that this will not be the final series taking place in the world because there will be the second era after uh, the first trilogy in the Guile Song series. So uh, there will be more books in the series uh, for sure. Onward to the next topic, this will be for Peter McLean's new book. Peter McLean and Joe Fletcher has confirmed that they are publishing a new standalone novel taking place in the same world as War for the Rose Throne series. I think many of you should know by now that I think War for the Rose Throne is one of the best grimdark fantasy series. It is criminally underrated and I think it is such a brilliant Peaky Blinder inspired grimdark fantasy with one of the most distinct main uh, narrator that I have ever read in fantasy book. And well, this is a confirmation that Peter McLean is writing another book taking place most likely after what happened in War for the Rose Throne series. And yeah, some familiar characters will be making a return in the standalone novel as well. Standalone uh, spin-off novel, I guess. But usually when an author say that a sequel book is a standalone novel, usually we should not believe that because it means that we have to read all the previous books first. In my experience, that's always the case anyway. So yeah, if you haven't read War for the Rose Throne yet, make sure to do it as soon as possible. I think it is amazing. And moving on to the next topic, this is not for a fantasy book, but this one will be for a new book by Ken Liu. And no, this is not a fantasy or a sci-fi book. This is Ken Liu's interpretation of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about this one, but knowing that this is written by Ken Liu, well, interpreted by Ken Liu, I'm sure I can get a lot of impactful and thought-provoking messages from reading this one. So yeah, even though this is not a fantasy and sci-fi book, I have to give this a spotlight. I have talked about this one in one of my SFF Spotlight episodes, but Ken Liu has confirmed there will be a physical copy coming next year. So yeah, I look forward to getting that as well. As you can see here, I own well, pretty much all of Ken Liu's books. I still have two more topics and then we will move on to talk about TV show adaptation and anime. There are some crazy uh, news to spotlight in that section. But for the next one, this is, I guess, a positive and also 
bad news, but this is regarding the trade paperback edition of Empire of Silence. So Empire of Silence since the month of September has been released again. A new paperback edition for Empire of Silence and the rest of the series has been released by Door Books. This is why I also decided to read Empire of Silence in the month of September. So if I end up loving it, I can boost that paperback sales. And of course, if you are not new here, you know how much I love the Sun Eater series and I love every book that I have read in the series Empire of Silence, uh, Howling Dark, and also Demon in White. Those three are absolutely phenomenal. And well, Christopher Rocchio has said on his Instagram page that apparently uh, the paperback edition for Empire of Silence is now sold out thanks to my review and also Daniel Green's review. This is really a snowball effect. Well, I'm feeling a bit conflicted about this one. On one hand, I'm really happy that the books are selling thanks to our reviews. But on the other hand, I think it's kind of crazy that there is no enough stock and well, if you want to own, if you want to buy the paperback edition, you will have to wait until mid-January. I think that is a long time to wait before you can actually get the paperback edition of Empire of Silence. So yeah, not only the hardcover edition is scarce, well, the paperback edition is also impossible to find for now. A new paperback edition anyway. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about this, but I will continue to keep on reading Sanita series and well, hopefully love the rest of the series as well. I think it will take like a huge misfortune for Kingdoms of Death and also Ashes of Man to not click with me. Based on the greatness of the first three books, I am very confident I will continue to love the Sun Eater series. And for the last piece of news before we move on to TV show adaptation, well, the next one is a continuation to the topic that I spotlighted in my previous SFF Spotlight episode. This is regarding Kate Corain. Goodreads drama. Insane Goodreads drama. I do not want to spend too much time on this one, but what has been feared has been confirmed by the author herself. So yeah, Kate Corrin admitted to doing all the crazy review bombing out of envy and jealousy. Now Illumicrate, Daphne Press, and also Del Rey, and also Kate Corrin's uh, agent, all of them have dropped her. So yeah, it is a pretty, pretty insane. And I hope many authors and also many readers can learn something from this. I will leave the link to the website that covers all the details regarding this insane drama in the description down below. But let's not dwell on the negative things, onward to the positive one. And now let's talk about TV show adaptation. Let's start with the first one. Uh, this is regarding Ted Williams. Ted Williams is finally getting a TV show adaptation and this one will be for not Memory, Sorrow and Thorn Trilogy, which I continue to enjoy. Well, Austin Art Saga anyway, because I have finished reading Memory, Sorrow and Thorn Trilogy. But this is for his cyberpunk or sci-fi uh, series, I think. The title is Other Lands. Yes, Other Lands is getting a TV show adaptation and it will be produced by the producer of The Witcher and also The Wheel of Time. And that honestly it's worrying to me because well the adaptation of the witcher and the wheel of time has not been clicking with me nicely but at the same time i just wish there will be more sales and also exposure to tad williams books and i hope even though if let's say the tv show adaptation sucks i hope that it will at least bring more readers to tad williams books because i think he deserves them and Otherland by tad williams is not the only sci-fi series getting a tv show adaptation murderbot is getting one too. Murderbot by Martha Wells. It has been slated for 10 episodes on Apple TV and Alexander Skarsgård will be playing, I assume, as Murderbot in the TV show adaptation. I have read only the first book in the Murderbot series and I actually have no idea how they will adapt this one into the TV show. But Apple TV has been adapting quite many great sci-fi stuff. So yeah, I look forward to seeing how they will adapt Murderbot. And speaking of sci-fi, the next one is of course for another big sci-fi movie and this is Dune Part 2 trailer. There is a new trailer for Dune Part 2 and I think it looks even more awesome. Every new teaser, every new trailer I see for Dune Part 2 makes me more excited. Every new teaser, every new trailer that I see for Dune Part 2 makes me even more excited for it and I think it is safe to say that Dune Part 2 is one of my most anticipated movie of next year. Maybe even my most anticipated movie of next year. And if you haven't watched the new trailer and you want to see it, well, make sure to do it. And moving on to the next topic, this is regarding the good omens. So yeah, it has been confirmed that it will get a season 3 
And also season 3 will be the final season of Good Omens TV show adaptation. Uh, Good Omen is written by Terry Pratchett and also Neil Gaiman. I have watched only the first season and I really enjoyed that one. And then I was going to watch season 2 as well and then I heard it ended on a cliffhanger or something. And well, I have decided to postpone that until the next season is out and it has been confirmed that season 3 will be released. It will mark the end of the Good Omens TV show adaptation and I hope it will be a satisfying conclusion. After the next topic, I will be talking about the big anime adaptation stuff. But for the next one, this is not for a movie or a TV show adaptation even though I really want this to happen. But this is for a music, original music orchestra composed because of the composer's love for the Green Bone Saga by Fondali. The title of the music is Jade Bones and I think it sounds amazing. I can definitely visualize the scenes depicted in the description of the music in the YouTube channel. But do not uh, read that description if you haven't read uh, Jade War and also Jade Legacy. Definitely uh, listen to it though because I think it is amazing and well, I can only hope there will be a great adaptation of the Green Bone Saga someday. Anime or live action, I don't care. As long as it is done well, I will not complain. I want nothing but success for the Green Bone Saga. But if this doesn't happen, we will always have the masterpiece of the books by Fondali. So that's it for TV show section. Now let's talk about anime stuff. And the first one is absolutely insane to me. I still, I am still speechless at the time of recording this video. So this is regarding One Piece. Yes, One Piece is getting a remake. One Piece anime is getting a remake and the title will be The One Piece. And guess what? Wit Studio will be in charge of the animation. For those of you who don't know, Wit Studio has done a lot of great uh, anime. For example, the first three seasons of Attack on Titan, which I consider to be masterpiece of an anime. And then there is also the first season of Vinland Saga, The Ranking of Kings, and also Spy Family. These are all produced and done by Wit Studio. And they will be doing the East Blue Saga of One Piece, the One Piece. And I have no idea whether they are planning to make more after that. I think if it's super successful, I think Netflix will continue to make sure there will be more episodes and more remakes for the One Piece. But what's so insane about this, this means that there will be ongoing two, two anime of One Piece. The current ongoing one with more than 1000 episodes and then another one, which is the full remake starting from the beginning. It is so crazy. I am of course feeling super happy about this. I've been a fan of One Piece for like almost two decades now. So I I don't know, I, just, I feel happy but also feel confused because I think this is the first time I witnessed two anime adaptation of the same series going on at the same time. So yeah. If you're a fan of One Piece, do let me know what you think about this though. Are you feeling excited about this or do you feel that it's too uh, weird? I think it is truly phenomenal because Ichiro Oda deserves all his success. He is a very hardworking person who dedicated almost all his life to One Piece. The manga has pretty much become the number one best-selling manga series of all time. And then there is a surprisingly successful live action adaptation and then the anime is still ongoing and now there is a new anime happening, a new anime remake happening. So yeah, all the success for Ichiro Oda. And there is also a one-shot chapter by Ichiro Oda taking place in the same world as One Piece being adapted as well and it is coming in the month of January. The title is Monster. I think it is safe to say that Netflix is investing a lot uh, in One Piece. <laughs> but Monster is not the only anime I'm excited about uh, in the month of January because Solo Leveling, there is a new trailer for the Solo Leveling manhwa adaptation. Solo Leveling is one of my favorite manhwa series of all time and it is getting an anime adaptation for those of you who don't know and yeah, it will premiere in the month of January. So yeah, not long from now. I think it will actually happen in the first week or the second week uh, in January. So yeah, really soon. Looking forward to seeing how this will turn out, although I think the manhwa will be really difficult to top. And then in the month of February, Demon Slayer will premiere again. The new season of Demon Slayer will happen and this is the Hashira training story arc. And well, of course, I look forward to watching this one uh, as well. We are getting closer and closer to the conclusion of Demon Slayer and knowing UFO table, this one will be another excellent adaptation. And finally, for the anime stuff, and then we will go back to talking about cover reveals. 
And this one will be regarding Blue Eye Samurai. Blue Eye Samurai due to the success of the first season. And I have watched Blue Eye Samurai. Thank you to all of you who keep on recommending that to me. And well, it is confirmed that it's getting a second season. I have no idea when this will happen, but it has been confirmed and I look forward to watching that. If you haven't watched Blue Eye Samurai yet and you love revenge story and also animation and character development done right, do take a look at this one. I do not think it is as good as Arcane yet, but it is a great animation. Now let's move on to the final section of today's SFF Spotlight episode. And yeah, as I said in the beginning of this video, this is a big SFF Spotlight episode. Episode. And I have six cover reveals to spotlight. The first one is for Drew Mindor by Michael J. Sullivan. This is the fifth book in the Ryria Chronicle series, which has now been confirmed to be eight books long. And this one will be released in 2024. I have no idea what month, but yeah, this one is being released in the year 2024. And it is suffice to say, this is one of my most anticipated novels of next year. And then after that, we have the cover reveals of The Fourth Stage by Tao Wong. This is book 10 in the Thousand Li series, and this will begin the final trilogy in the Thousand Li series, a progression fantasy and xianxia series that I am, oh, I have been looking forward to reading this one for quite a while now, but now that it's nearing the end, I think I might as well wait for the conclusion before I start uh, reading the series. It will be better for my reading enjoyment uh, as well anyway. The cover art, once again, is done by Felipe de Barros, just like all the previous cover art in the series. And the next one will be for The Dark Feather by Anna Stevens. This is the third and the final book in the Songs of the Drowned trilogy. I really love The Stone Knife. I think it is one of the most underrated grim dark fantasy novel. And finally, well, this one comes as a surprise to me. I really did not expect this one will be released this soon. But The Dark Feather, the concluding volume, will be released in March 2024. So I guess I should really find the time to do a second read of The Stone Knife and then continue reading the rest of the trilogy. The cover art, just like the previous two books, is once again done by Stephen Mulcahy. And the next one will be for The Fire Within Them by Matthew Ward. This is the sequel to The Darkness Before Them. And the cover art is again done by John Wilson. I think it is such a beautiful cover art. I really love the matching style and design uh, to the first book, but I still haven't read the first book yet. Many have mentioned that the first book is reminiscent of Mistborn, which is not a surprise based on reading the premise of the book, but genuinely, I have no idea whether the book is actually good or not. I have only read one book by Matthew Ward, uh, Legacy of Ash, and I really enjoyed that one, but I haven't read anything else by him. I look forward to reading this series too someday though, but I think I will be reading the Legacy Trilogy first to the end. And next, we have the cover reveals to the fourth book in the Drowned Kingdom saga, and this is Alliance Pride by P.L. Stewart. I heard a lot of great things about this grim dark fantasy series as well, but I haven't started reading this yet, so I cannot say anything about it yet for now. And moving on to the final topic and the final cover reveals of today's SFF Spotlight episode, this will be for a graphic novel adaptation for Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hopp. The second volume of the graphic novel adaptation of Assassin's Apprentice, the cover art is out now. I haven't actually read uh, the graphic novel of Assassin's Apprentice. If any of you have read that, do let me know what you think about that because I am a huge fan of the realm of the Elder Links and right now in my mind, I really don't think a graphic novel could capture the beautiful aspect, the beautiful aspect of Robin Hobbs writing and storytelling. But who knows, I could be proven wrong. Artwork-wise, I think they look beautiful. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of today's SFF Spotlight episode and probably the last SFF Spotlight episode uh, of the year. Assuming that this is indeed the last episode of the year, I will be doing the first SFF Spotlight episode of the year 2024 in the first week of the year, of next year. But until then, do let me know what you think about all the news that I spotlighted today. And of course, I want to say, I want to say thank you so much to all of you who keep on tuning to SFF Spotlight this year. SFF Spotlight has to definitely increase in its audience and I am really happy because this is not an easy series of videos to do, but I also like compiling and also sharing this data, this news to all of you because many of you found this to be beneficial and I will do my best to keep on doing that next year as well. So yeah, uh, do let me know what you think about the news that I spotlighted in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.